Now, we are a funny bunch of folk, aren't we? Because we would tend to do is sort of like stand where we are, look forward and hope for the utopia in the future when everything's going to be, I don't know, Sunday every day and chocolates grow on sweets and money's found in your bin. And we tend to do that. To me, I think, if we want to look forward, what we've got to do is look back. Have a look and see what's been forgotten. What can be improved? What can we do with old ideas and modern materials? How could we improve that to then look forward? So a huge part of what is not done, I think, is that looking back to look forward. And that's really one of the things we do here. We really enjoy doing that. Now, one of the things we're working on, obviously, is the wind turbine. And we've been doing it on the floor in the car park, which is not brilliant, I'll give you. It's just not the best place to do it. But if you've ever tried to hoist a wind turbine up, you stick some blades and a motor on the end of a long pole and then try to lift that up, that's a challenge, eh? That motor, that motor weighs a ton. If we build a tower and put that firmly there, we've still got to get up to the thing. So getting that power of the wind to turn that wind turbine and getting that power transmitted is a problem. Now we think about it in our conventional way, of course, and so we, we stick that jenny on straight on the blade, right up the, the uh, top of the wind tower, convert it to electricity, and then we run a few wires down there, and we have power transmission. Now, when you do that, actually, modern generators and motors, they have about an 85% efficiency. So you get about 85% efficient out of that by transferring the mechanical energy into electrical energy and then transmitting that way. Now, it isn't the only answer. If you have a look back at sort of the 17th, 18th century, 19th century, you'll see a ton of ways of transmitting mechanical power where there is no conversion. It's direct mechanical power to mechanical power transmission. Now, it began um, things like interlinked rods, and then they started using things like rope, and then wire rope. I mean, nowadays, we kind of think of, of chains and drive shafts, that sort of thing. I don't, again, necessarily agree with that. Now, I don't agree with that, not because it's not a good and efficient method. That's not the reason. People tell me very often the limiting factors uh, tend to be things like, I don't know, materials you're using and blah, 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 and, and this and that and a whole lot of the others. What I've actually found is <laughs> the limiting factor is complexity of building the damn thing and how much it costs to make it. They are the real limiting factors. So as we're looking at this power transmission problem, we start to think about that. Could we do a way that would transmit the power that would be easy to build, cheap to build, reasonably efficient, and doable? Now, you may be surprised to learn, and I certainly was surprised to learn, that rope transmission actually is hugely efficient particularly over smaller distances. And they used rope transmission in Switzerland right up until the 1930s, believe it or not. So we'd have these like deep ravines with a water wheel in it. And of course, you're not building a house in a deep ravine. You're not putting a mill down there. So somehow they had to get that power of the water wheel up to the top of the ravine. And they used ropes. I mean, it makes sense. The Swiss absolutely love cable cars. They're all over the place. And there's not much difference between a rope transmission and a cable car. So it makes sense. But they basically put these rope transmission systems in. Now, Luke's been working on a rope transmission system because we want one for our wind turbine. Let's have a look at his system. Hey, mate, what you got here? Okay, so basically what we've got right here is two wheels and we've got two cradles. Didn't you get those from a kiddie's bike? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the right place to get some yeah. stuff, man. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so, what's this? Okay, so this is my rope. Oh, what um, kind? This is a jude hemp rope. Jute? Yeah, a jute rope. Oh, okay. Um, we could obviously replace this with something like a polyprop rope and it would become more weather resistant, but this is what we're using right now. Doesn't polyprop have a problem stretching? Polyprop does have a problem stretching, but mm. you can put a tensioner on it to make sure that, that when it does stretch, you can always tension it back up. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah. So, if I do this... <laughs> amazing! <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> amazing! <laughs> so, that's awesome! Okay, then what's happening this end? Okay, so down at this end, this is our power output shaft where okay. a generator is going to be attached. Okay, right cool. here. 
So what's the difference in efficiency? Because we know that it's like 85% if we just stuck the jenny on the, the blades on the jenny. Yeah. So this is going to be around 90% efficient. Where are the losses? In the slack of the rope because of your... Because the rope slips okay. if it's not tensioned properly. Okay, so tensioning is key? Yep, tensioning is a big key. And bearings? Um, yes. So the losses are friction and slip? Yeah, friction and slip. Yep. Awesome. Okay, we'll get a generator on there, mate, and we'll come back and see your lights of light. Yes, let's put a generator on it. Awesome! <laughs> okay, the jenny's on. Have a look at this. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Using a bicycle wheel, and if you wanted to gear this, you could keep the gear cluster on. So there you go. By looking at the past on this rope transmission, which was used extensively over amazing distances, I mean, you're talking about five miles, some of the larger systems, pretty standard was about a kilometre or so. So certainly for what we're looking for, that is mechanical power transmission from the top of the pole to the ground, we're talking about a really interesting system. And of course the advantages are just obvious. I mean, one thing is you don't have this massive weight on top of a pole. So the Structure doesn't need to be as big. The other thing is, of course, all of the generation and all of the connections are down at the ground. And you're not having to run so much cable. So it's easier to maintain, it's cheaper to install, and the support structure doesn't need to be anywhere near as heavy. So there are a ton of really good reasons to be looking at direct mechanical power to mechanical power transmission. The big advantages of two bicycle wheels and a bit of rope is how difficult is that to engineer and how inexpensive is it? Anyway, we thought we'd introduce this project on um, mechanical power transmission. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.